kids. And a new survey has found that on average, parents spend a whopping five grand wow. a year on wow. ferrying their children around. Five thousand pounds, Th Judy. That's, that's what you're currently spending, and you don't even maybe quite realise it. Do you need to start charging the children? I need to do, do something. they pay this back? I at need some to do point? something. That's a lot of hairstyles. That's a lot of nails. <laughs> that's a lot of holidays. I mean, look. If I'm real, there's no point in charging the kids because I'm the only one giving them pocket money. So basically, <laughs> I'm, I'll be you paying myself. <laughs> and I feel like the kids are spoiled these days anyway, whether it's from you or whether it's in school or, you know, everyone's being championed and sometimes they need a reality check. I always say to my children, I think my face says it all, especially when we're getting up <laughs> oh, yeah. at 7 a.m. in the morning or I've yeah. had a good night out and I've got to tax them here or everywhere. If I'm real with you, I, I always make friends with people, other parents <laughs> that are in the team. I start to talk and, oh, where do you live? Oh, gosh, I live there. Oh, you live down the road. What about next week? Are you going to the game? Because, you know, I would go and maybe I could do your child a week after because it's so much. Tactical and friendship. It's tactical yeah. friendship. Yeah. And the thing is, you start to feel guilty sometimes when you can't pick them up or when you can't take them and you, you think you're trying to build your career, but actually maybe their career is something that they've seen when they're 12 or 13. So it's just that balance. So I'd say big up all the football mums, all, all the parents that are running up and down. But if there's anyone that's in the clubs where my kids go, listen, just call me. Yeah, we <laughs> tag team together. I never got in the family car, except on the weekends. When I went to school, it was walk to the station, make your own way mm. there. And for the first few years of my life... <laughs> oh, I I know! On this show, oh, I have to yeah. be 100, mate. <laughs> All right, I'm older than you, Linda. <laughs> About oh, like ten years. <laughs> or twelve. I did school. I did have to do all my homework on the underground. Oh, cue <laughs> the music. <laughs> actually, I just remember there's another reason why I never got in the family car. <laughs> <laughs> when I was about ten, my dad got a second-hand hearse. Oh my! My dad got a no, second-hand hearse and expected music me to go. On yeah. Family holiday <laughs> under your strange. <laughs> sitting in the back of the house, all the way to Memphis. Did you have to? Did you have to lie down like this? No, <laughs> like we got a potty, and you find if anyone wants a wee, oh. do it in that and sling it out. Do you know what? Do you know what kills it? Every time Janet tells a story, you think surely it can't get any worse or any more eccentric than this. And then she tells you something else, and you're like, yes, it can. <laughs> she drops why. the mic every conversation. Oh, I'm sorry, that's why I am the way I am. I had to go on holiday. In a hearse. <laughs> oh That's God. the name of your autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> See, my mum used to, if we were late for school, oh. my mum would bring a cab and the three of us would get in the cab oh. together and go to school. And then when my kids started going to school, they didn't really have friends that lived around us, so they yeah. would have had to go on their own. So I'd get my stepdad to drop them off, or if I weren't working, I'd go and drop them off and pick them up. So they right. got used to it. So I don't think they ever actually had to get in a bus or a tube. This is the... terrible. It's well, they do now, no, but when they were that, younger, because they had no one to go with, they can't walk on their own to school. They needed yes. someone. Oh, they can't. Of no. course, a child of ten can walk on their own. Well, we did it because we could. I mean, not everyone can do it, but it's we could. And I had backup, days. so I could. It has changed. This. I feel more anxiety. protective. Over do you it. take your kids? To yeah, school? I try to. I do take them now and then. And sometimes I think, look, I can't be pushing all my fears onto my son and my daughter. Yeah. You know, but I'm. Have you got there yet? What time you get? Like, I'm always checking on them and you know checking what's going on in the area and so on. And I just, I, I, I realise that maybe we have kind of like done too much. I said to my kids the other day, you know, we're going to walk to the shop and they Walk. <laughs> Get up. Yes. I got your, your two foot down the hill. I was like, your two, take your two foot and walk. Because I could, you know, but it's just that thing of like, oh, let's just jump in a car, let's just, and you know, all the other thing, the protective factors and worrying and so on. But um, man, they've got it different than how we did. Yeah. yeah. I, I got four buses, actually. No. I did. I got four buses a day. Yeah, you're not mocking, we all did. You're not it wasn't that. Well, because she got four buses. You got a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> when I went on the underground, I had two or three trains. And then when you're little and you're walking down a road in the winter to school and you've got just a horrible little gym slip on and your legs are all thin and sticky, you feel freezing. Oh, oh my God. God. Where's the tissues? No, I've got that tissue down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. I find out something new all the time.